This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. In the city of San Francisco, a man on the street pollster recently asked this question, what old values should be readopted? An English undergraduate student said each person should determine for himself how they want to live their lives. I don't believe in imposed moral codes. Everyone should look into his own inner conscience and decide. A high school senior said, for women, femininity. I would say that's the most important thing for a woman, for a man to be more of a true gentleman and to readopt chivalry. A nursing student said, I myself have always been a modest person. I don't like to see women show lack of respect for themselves. A job seeker said, tribal living, people living together in a tribal situation, we should go back to that. Another old value I'd like to have, she said, is a job. A mother of six replied, I think the main thing is to tell your children God is not dead, that God is really there. I think this is where we've gone astray. Look at what's happening, that's the main trouble. And finally, a clothing sales representative said, the quality of consciousness, the desire to be hard working, to achieve success on your own merits. He said, I believe in hard work. What about it? Which old values should be readopted? Considering the things that are wrong with the world, what are the greatest needs of humankind and in your life? When you listen to a five-minute radio news report or a half-hour TV newscast, what percentage of that news is usually good? Perhaps less than 10%. But does that mean that because 90% of the news you read or hear is bad, that therefore 90% of everything that happens on Earth is bad? Certainly not. It's that we hear more about the bad things, supposedly in order that people may be able to correct them. But this is the problem. How? Attempting to treat the ills of society by material means alone is like putting a layer of theatrical makeup on a tuberculosis patient's face and calling it a cure because it makes him look so much better. The underlying sickness of human society is spiritual, a need to learn love, tolerance, compassion and to learn to apply spiritual principles to the living of daily life. One characteristic of evil is that the advertising is inevitably better than the product. Evil sounds better than it is, but always it is less than expected. Goodness is just the opposite. It is inevitably better than you had hoped. Goodness has its source in God, and a fragment of God indwells your mortal mind. According to ancient history, Caesar Augustus, devoutly believed that it was unlucky to enter a house or leave a chamber left foot foremost. And the Greek philosopher Pythagoras taught his pupils that to put on the left sandal before the right one would likewise bring ill fortune. The human race may have spent more time worrying about right and left than about right and wrong, preoccupied with the trivial rather than the timeless. But there are vastly more important issues in life. How, for example, do you cope with your own inner life, the way you feel, your actions and reactions? What do you do when you feel unhappy? Do you sometimes feel so unhappy you don't know what to do? If you're like most people, and who isn't, you probably view unhappiness as being akin to a case of the 24-hour influenza. You assume it's simply going to wear off in time. But in fact, there are principles and conditions for the creation of happiness, spiritual principles, to love God and to love others is the ultimate source of joy in daily living. The saying is live and learn. Most people just live and learn very little about living. After an entire lifetime plodding this planetary clod of Earth, how frustratingly few people ever learn to control their tempers, to conquer worry, to live in love instead of hostility. That truth is stronger than a lie. That goodness has the power to overcome. That faith can conquer fear. That to live in love for God and others is why we are here on this earth, to live as sons and daughters of the deity and brothers and sisters to each other in compassion and understanding. These are all practical, applicable principles. Philosophy is the attempt to think truth. Religion, the endeavor to live it. You can live in the wondrous joy of being a son or daughter of God and knowing it. Jesus taught his followers to pray for bread in the Lord's Prayer. But on another occasion, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, which is true on two levels. First, that human beings cannot live only by physical nourishment, but need faith as well. And secondly, it is true as a scientific fact. People can't live by bread alone. They need other proteins, nutrients, vitamins, minerals, not found in bread to survive. In the same fashion that you need a balanced physical diet, you need a balanced philosophy and religion with faith and wisdom in equipoise, prayer and action in balance. 
and zeal instructed by insight. To live in love for God and others is to live a fully fulfilled life. It is living by faith. You hear that phrase, act of faith, yet is not faith itself an act? You may believe passively, but you can only have genuine faith actively. Belief is nodding your head to a truth. Faith is not only nodding your head to a truth, but stamping your foot for it, clicking your heels for it, perhaps waving your arms for it, and most significantly of all, living your life for it. A fact may be believed, but a truth must be lived, and that requires living faith. And the greatest truth is that God is your Father, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, that every person on this planet, black and white and red and yellow and every hue and shade between whatever continent, whatever country, whatever background, nationality, dialect, all are infinitely valuable sons and daughters of this living God. King Henry II of England, who died in 1189, initiated a vast campaign to rid the land of criminals and robber barons. By historical count, he destroyed or burned to the ground a sum total of 1,115 castles. Thus it is that some individuals throughout history are largely remembered for what they have destroyed, others for what they have built. Such likewise is the fundamental choice of every human life, of your life, the choice to be a creator or a destroyer, to do ill or good, to curse or to bless, to seek to do the very will of God for you, for your years on this earth, or to be content merely with idle aimlessness. This fundamental choice is yours. Not a week from now, a year from now, a month from now, but this very instant. Why? Because you're thinking about it this very instant, and a week, a month, or a year from now, you may not be thinking about it. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Greatness has its origin in the making of great decisions, achieving great purposes, and then acting on those purposes. What would it take to make you truly happy this very instant? Possessions, something material, imagine in your mind right now the one thing which you believe more than anything else you would like to have, something physical, then visualize it as being whisked miraculously into your presence or you into its presence, whatever it might be, how long do you suppose it would be before you began to become a bit discontented with whatever it was and wanted something else and then something a little bit more, then something else, then something new, the only real satisfactions in human life are the inward ones, peace of soul, possession of spiritual values, living by faith, knowing who you are and why you are and what your destiny is in this universe, endless survival, the joy of exploring a universe which is more a university, knowing God, discovering truth and beauty and reality in ever unfolding realms. These are the authentic sources of joy, and you can begin to taste and experience them here and now. Smoke, salt, sugar, vinegar are all classified as preservatives, material preservatives. But you could make another list of spiritual preservatives, faith, hope, love, dedication. They sustain, they preserve joy, peace, a sense of purpose in life, and life as it was intended and created to be. The Austrians have a saying, he who holds the ladder is no better than the thief to cooperate or assist in wrongdoing in evil can be spiritually paralyzing jesus taught blessed are the pure in heart those whose loyalties are undivided who serve god wholeheartedly with fearless unflinching faith jesus didn't say you shall love the lord your god with some of your attention a bit of your interest a portion of your commitment no he said you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, mind, and strength, with a totality of commitment and worship, and love your neighbor as yourself. And this is a living faith of living affirmation, not of mere self-denial. People are accustomed to thinking of self-denial as denying to oneself experiences which are pleasant and enjoyable. But the highest form of self-denial is denying oneself those experiences 
which are evil, bitter, and unjoyful, while clasping to the self those experiences which are good and true and beautiful, the very things of God, love, faith, and joy. Claim these as your spiritual birthright. Some individuals subconsciously seem to hold the feeling that truth is by definition painful, unpleasant. When a child has done something wrong or is telling a falsehood, the mother may sternly, rebukingly admonish, tell the truth. Thus, truth can come to have a negative connotation. Truth was something that used to get you spanked when you told it when you were young, but there is another side to truth. It's joy, it's goodness. And of the exploration of that truth, there is no end. God can use ordinary people in extraordinary ways. If you happen to be an extraordinary person to begin with, just as well, God can use you too. But even if you're an ordinary person, God can use you in extraordinary ways. If you will make an extraordinary commitment of your life, your time, your energies, all you are, all you can be, all you hope to be to God as an act of worship, of love, to the source and creative origin of all reality, the origin of you who loves you with a love which will not let you go, who forgives you, who has compassion, concern, and an illuminated, luminous, endless future stretching through all the eons of eternity before you, whose spirit dwells within you. This God loves you with a living love and has a marvelous, wonderful life for you to live if you will seek it said the master seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened ask and you will receive if you're interested in these topics write to us we want to hear from you at the spiritual renaissance institute box 3080 oakhurst california 93644 that's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attaché case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.